you were going. What? How fast you were going. I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast. If you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot. Leave now. Run in your safe space. Get your little cloth for your tears. All the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and his guest and do not reflect the opinions of any local or government agency. Welcome to Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. I'm your host, Iceman. You know, Duke's in my lap right now. He's being needy again. I don't know what the hell his dog's problem is. Uh, we're going to have a guest again this evening. I'm excited about that. Let's get the housekeeping out the way. If you want a great cigar, go to MyPatriotCigar.com and order you some of their cigars. They are very delicious. Or, or get old sterile one. Also, if you do, go use the, motor, uh, the promo code MOTORCOP15. Get yourself 15% off. If you order $100 or more, I believe they still have free shipping. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm trying to save people. It is a, uh American-owned company, small businessman. If y'all like cigars, go check them out. It's not that cheap, swisher sweet crap. So, Also, if you want any merchandise, Go check it out uh, on my Etsy store, Motor Cop uh, Chronicles Etsy store, or you can go to the website, motorcopchronicles.com, and pick you out some merchandise. I'm about to put out some new stuff as we speak. Uh, working on a unicorn titty milk uh, water bottle. It's going to be interesting. We know we all like the unicorn titty milk. And if you want more Motor Cop Chronicles, you can go to the Patreon. I have uh, almost 20 episodes up there. Numerous videos. I have text uh, videos, uh, extra episodes. I'm, I'm very active on there. So uh, that's if you want to. If not, I understand time's tight. You can't afford it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to continue to keep putting out the free stuff. Just because I love talking to y'all so much. Also, we're going to shout out our full crew members because they helped me keep the lights on. We got Mr. Uh, Jared Nitrous. We got Mr. John Demink. We got Dan Carlson with Burley Board. Y'all go check him out. He makes some great products. We got T-Bird. We got Mr. Jim Pokrant from the Short Track Guys podcast. Our favorite truck driver, Hoppy Hoppison. Mr. Blake Walker. Uh, Z Palmer. We have uh, Roy Spaulding. That's Roy with the S, not Roy with the P. We have our favorite Australian girl, JoJo. We got Kaylee Norris and Natasha A. from the state of Washington. And our OG crew member, Melissa Holstein. We appreciate every single one of y'all. Like I said, y'all helping me pay my bills every month. And without further ado, we're going to introduce the host to the Practical Prepping Podcast. And he's also a retired... Leo, he's retired. He, he's also a paramedic and a fireman. This man was a triple threat. I mean, he, he had it all. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great, Ice Man, and I do appreciate the invitation to be here today. Oh, I appreciate My you coming. Mark. My name is Mark Lawley, and I am in North Alabama. And I started that business in 1978. Then I took a 22-year break. Got to hanging around with some guys drinking coffee, wound up going on a couple of calls, and, you know, you shouldn't hang around what you know you're addicted to. So I wound up going back, and I just retired July the 1 in North Alabama from the Sheriff's Department. And tell the people when you started your career. I started in September of 1978. I was 21 and a half years old when I went into a police car. I had dispatched for a couple of years, and then I went to, as I was going through paramedic school, and then I went to the fire department because I thought that was where I could best use the paramedic skills. Then I figured out I stayed cleaner in a police car, 
And I could still show up on the scene and use the skills that I had. And so I switched over to law enforcement and did a total of 24 years in law enforcement. And with that 22-year break in between, and I did uh, 19 years as a paramedic and three as a firefighter. It's been a fun ride. You had a, a pretty full plate there. Yeah. And now my wife and I, we've, we've written a couple of books, Practical Prepping for Everyday People. It's the practical stuff. We don't do zombies. We don't do bunkers. We don't do alien invasions. But we do hurricanes, tornadoes, snowstorms, things like that, power outages. And we have the podcast, which is Practical Prepping, and the website's practicalprepping.info, and there's 416 episodes on there as of this morning, so we're sure you'll find something that you enjoy. Yeah, you can definitely go binge on that. (laughs) (laughs) Take you you more than a day to listen to it. Yeah, take you a while to catch up on it. Uh, So, uh, let's just start out. You got some on. But all those years, you got to have some, some, a couple of funny stories that that happened out there to you, either with law law enforcement, paramedics, or a combination of all of them. Oh yeah, there there's some funny stuff, and I'll be glad to share that with you. But for any young officers that are listening, I have one real regret, and that is that I did not start journaling this stuff. From day one, if you just write down the funny stuff, I mean, by now, I would have enough to do three really good books and they'll sell. I mean, people like police books and um, the most of us have had this happen and you start to arrest someone or you're shaking them down and you find weed in their pocket. You say, oh, I've got your weed. Well, that's not my weed. It's not my well, it's pants. it's in your pocket. Well, it's not my pants. And my wife thought I was kidding her about that when she and I married. And then she saw it on one of the, I think it was the uh, one with. It's live PD, anyway, I think. It was live PD. And she saw that and she just started cracking up. Well, that was always the funny one. Well, we beat that one night. We, Matt Williams and I were working the north end of the county, and this was about 2 a.m., and we got a fight call that was in the middle of the road. So we get to that intersection, and we do see a couple of people at a trailer over there, and so we pulled up, and we were asking about what was going on and trying to get, just sort through it. And Matt had his flashlight going up and down the guy who had no shirt on and wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. And he said, there has not been a fight here. And so Matt says, well, why is there blood on your foot? And before he thought about what he was saying, he said, that's not my foot. (laughs) (laughs) Even his girlfriend, who this really turned out to be a domestic situation she even started laughing at him so that that was just you know that's not my foot yeah, that's, that's when you were doing arrest somebody and charge him with theft and we say that's what you still say well he had somebody else's foot that's what he told us we have a statement <laughs> an excited utterance he had somebody else's foot on so <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that one and um Another one, this was back in my early career, and there were two of us, and we worked the western section of Jefferson County, which is the county that Birmingham, Alabama sits in, and we worked a river territory, and we had kind of gotten bored. And you know that approximately 10% of the people driving cannot hand you a driver's license. And so what Bill and I did, we both, we said we worked together in separate cars, but we parked one car, we got in the car together, and we were, we did this for probably, I don't know, a month. And I'm going to use a fictitious name on him, let's just say Smith. 
<laughs> and um, we were stopping one headlight cars. And we were taking the no driver's license. That, that's what we were really doing. And usually with warnings, but we were stopping them. Sometimes we'd find the drunks and what have you. But this thing began to grow, and Bill kind of started it and said that our department is, we're observing National One Headlight Awareness Week. And this thing just kept growing and growing and growing. We were having fun with it. And then one night, we stopped a young man, and he was probably 20. And he said, um, oh, I, I, I didn't know it was out. My dad would not have let me go if, you know, let me leave the house if he had known I didn't have a headlight. And he said, y'all might know him. He said, he works with you. said, he's Captain Williams. So instantly, both of us put our hands across our chest and covered up our name tags. <laughs> <laughs> and and we said you tell him jones and rogers said hello well we were white guys and the two guys we quoted were black guys <laughs> <laughs> and then after my captain retired i ran into him in a bookstore and i told him i said um, i told him the story of it and and he said well i knew y'all were doing stuff down there but y'all kept you know, producing, kept earning good stuff. So we just left you alone. We had a lot of fun down there. And then I had the five foot, two inch, 95 pound young lady. Yeah, she was probably 45 at the time. And I'm six, four and I was about 185 pounds. I'm 210 now, but I was bigger then than I am now, even though I was what 25 pounds lighter. Uh, heavier now and she decided she was going to whip me and <laughs> and here I am six foot four and here's one wearing a leather skirt with all the dangly stuff on the bottom of it she would spent way too much time on the back of the motorcycle in the 70s <laughs> <And> <laughs> I'm literally you've seen this on cartoons I'm holding her head and she is swinging just as hard as she can, and she's not even coming within six or eight inches of me. I just had her back by the head, and that one was a lot of fun. Just giving well. her an A for effort, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, she was trying. She was really, really trying. Was she intoxicated or high? Uh, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't think she knew where she was, for that matter. And she did go to jail. She did go to jail that night. And then we've all had that one that we put in the car, female, that somehow managed to take all their clothes off while they're in the back of the patrol car. Handcuffed. <laughs> Handcuffed. <laughs> and I still haven't figured out how they could do that, but you just get on the radio and tell the dispatcher what's going on. Yep. Can't get, accused of, can't get accused of that. Yep. Ask a female deputy to meet you outside or in the sally port at the jail. And when you get out of the car, you just walk away. <laughs> you just leave it for her to deal with. Don't yeah. want to be anywhere near that accusation. Well, nowadays, you know, we actually will search a female, but we use the way you're taught how to do it with the back of your hands and stuff if we mm -hmm. don't have a female around. Because... You know, nowadays, you don't know what a woman might have on her now. They, they can, they'll they shoot you. Uh, when I first started, I, I started uh, full-time in 95. And, uh, you know, back then still, you, you just didn't search a female. You didn't touch, touch yeah. them uh, when it was like that. But now, yeah, I mean, you got to. You can't put them in a, a unit or anything without, you know, mm -hmm. checking now, them out. We were, we were fortunate that we had some female deputies on duty most all the time. Not always, but most of the time. So if it needed to go to a detail search, we'd get one of them to come. So, but yeah. And the body cams today are so much more protection 
there was a young man accused of a whole bunch of stuff. And he was sitting there in court just smiling. And then they played the tape, and the judge decided that she was not being forthcoming with her story. So he gave her four days for lying to him so she could sit in jail and think about it. Yeah, I think if he hadn't had for body film, he was toast. I think I, all the SJWs out there and the Justice Warriors have thought that once the body cams hit, oh, man, the cops are done for. They're, we're just going to totally demolish and wipe out law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was old school. At first, I'm like, man, I don't need people record. I don't want to be recorded, this and that. You know, I feel like, you know, they don't trust me. Well, no. Well, you know what? It helps. I was wrong. Oh, sure. I was wrong. And it's a great thing uh, because it, with all the body cam footage you see now, it's done saved more cops' careers than it has destroyed them. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of folks don't realize this, but good cops don't like dirty cops. And there's not, I try to tell people all the time, it's, there's not, it's all the news puts on it. Mm-hmm. You probably got less than 1% of cops that are bad. Oh, yeah. And it's just, yeah. but it seems like, that, but that's all you see, because that's all they put on the news. They're not going to put, you know, Joe Blow Cop over here to bought the homeless guy's shoes or bought him a lunch or did this or did they don't want that that's not exciting right. you know? yeah, we had one not long ago that uh, he was called to a discount store and the lady was shoplifting and she was shoplifting but when he checked she was shoplifting groceries and he dug further into it and so rather than taking her to jail he took her back in there and bought her about $100 worth of groceries for her family. And that happens all over the place. Yeah, I mean, she was stealing to feed. Now, this yes. latest woman, uh, I don't know if you saw the news, when that got shot and killed, uh, she was shoplifting and then tried to run over the cop. But uh, mm-hmm. she was shoplifting alcohol while she was pregnant. I don't think she, that, that, that was necessity. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> so, but no, I get you. Some people, you know do it i mean wasn't a bad person she's just trying to feed her family so yeah oh yeah and now the the good thing about that one is that did hit the news they actually put up a, a nice piece together on him but the media we have here is pretty good about the good stuff they really are but most people never know about it i mean how many times have we run into somebody on the road and they don't have money for gas and we go buy them a few dollars worth of gas put in their car yes yeah, that's stuff you never hear about yeah oh, no. most of them you know i've done stuff i still do stuff i don't talk about it because i'm not i don't do it because i'm trying to be recognized for it i do it right. because it's a uh humane thing to do mm-hmm. Being i carried a two gallon gas can in the back of my car in the back of my tahoe just for running out, just for people running out of gas. And I carried it and I sealed it up pretty well. You couldn't smell it in the car. But I did that because really for me, it was quicker to pull my gas can out, give them a couple of gallons of gas than it was to take them to get gas. Oh, yeah. Totally understand that. I'm glad it didn't spill on you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I spilled some gas in my trunk before, and, oh, God, it was so bad for weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so uh, bad. <laughs> yeah. And well, yeah. how many tires get changed on the side of the road for mm. people? Um, it's just it's public service. We're serving the public. Can you tell me, young men, I've taught how to change a tire. Because I don't mind helping an elderly man or woman change a tire, or, or a woman, period. But if I show up, especially nowadays, they'll call, you know, we got a stranded motorist and with a flat tire. And I go out there, and it's some 22-year-old kid. And, well, I don't know how. Were well, you about to learn there, sonny boy? Yep. And I, I'll stay in there, and I will instruct them <laughs> what to do. 
in yeah, the whole entire I've, time. I've done I'm like several times. I'm not, I don't mind helping older people or women, but I'm not getting down yeah. there getting dirty for some 22 year old man that should have been known how to change a tire. Absolutely, and you know you you've actually served him better by teaching him because there may come a situation where there is no one to help him. Now he knows how. Yeah. We had one not too long ago. Uh, the kid showed up. This woman had a flat tire. Was out there helping her. Her son shows up. 20-something years old. He's like, I can do it. I'm like, okay. I just got the lug nuts loose. You know, uh, He grabbed a jack and he was putting it on his little scissor jack and put it up in there. I'm like, uh, you, you got the jack in the wrong spot. And this kid turned around and like snapped at me. Mm-hmm. I know what's hard. I know what I'm doing. And I said, okay there, buddy. And I went and leaned on my motorcycle and watched because I knew this was going to be a shit show here. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say another word. I just said, okay. So I walked back there and sat and waited. And he started to jack it up. And, of course, you know, he hit it in the wrong spot. So he fell off the jack and stuff like that. And I was like, hmm. Jack Felix, it's the wrong spot. You have a good day there, buddy. Got on my shit and drove away. Because <laughs> my yeah. helping time was done at that point. They, some kid going to turn around and holler at me. when It's like, okay, if you got it, you got it. Because I knew it was going to happen with where he put that jack. Yeah, and, you know, it's amazing how many people will argue with you. And my wife will tell people that I've told her I've let more people go to jail than I have put in jail. <laughs> They, they just talk themselves into going. Yeah, I've, I've had people, like I said, I've pulled some people over before. I'm a traffic cop. I'm a motorcycle cop. Uh, I'll get out, you know, to walk up walk up to their car just to warn them, you know, say, hey, look, you slow down. Because uh, if I walk up to a car, you know, and I don't have, well, I do it differently now, but if I used to, if I walked up and I didn't have no ticket book in my hand, I didn't plan on writing a ticket. Mm-hmm. I've had several people, I'm like, hold on a minute. Let me go back to my motorcycle and get yeah. my ticket book. Because they talk themselves right into a ticket. Oh, yeah. And if they would just say, you know, sir, I'm I'm sorry. You know, wasn't paying attention. My mind drifted. Uh, slow down. Go on your way. Have a good day. Well, it used to aggravate me more than it does now. But <laughs> it's like the people say, oh, that wasn't me. I, I wasn't speeding. I feel like saying, mm-hmm. you're, you're right. I just made the shit up and picked you out. I was like, you know what? I don't like yellow cars today. I'm going to pull over all the yellow cars today and tell them that they're speeding and just make shit up and write them a ticket for it. I'm yeah, like, and with the new LIDAR, uh, you can pick them out of a line now. Oh, you can tell me I'm a LIDAR instructor. And, and I get them all. I, I work a lot of interstate uh, ticket writing. And people's like, well, that wasn't me. I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'll, I'll act because I'm not one of them cops. Like, or what if they say, I want to see it. Okay. I have no, even though I don't have to show it to them. Uh, Brown State uh, laws and stuff, I don't have to show you my speed device or whatever that I cast. Train, but I, here. but I, I show it. I, I actually brought it up to them. I had them argue with me. I've come back with it. I'm like, look, I just want to let you know. Here, here's where I locked you. I got you at 600 and 58.6 feet away from me. I said, and if you would like to look up through that heads-up display right there, because I put mine on a little little dot, not even mm-hmm. a square with the dot on my on the aiming uh, point on. I said, if you want to look up through this heads-up display right here, you'll see this little the little green dot in there. And I said, that's, I'm like, you see it? I have to hold that dot on your windshield until I get a lock tone. So I know exactly what car I got. It is impossible mm-hmm. for me to get the wrong. And a lot of the time they'll, they'll just, they'll just shut up, you know, yeah. or when I bring it to them and show it to them, like you, I've, I've actually come up to a car to bring it to some people to show them. And they're like, I don't want to see it. I'm like, what's well, right here. You know, it's like, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's like, what just because you called me a liar. I'm just showing you that I didn't make this shit up. You know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I get the, uh, of course, you know, nowadays I get the, the only reason you pulled me over because I'm black. I'm like, ma'am, sir, I said I clocked you at probably about six, 700 feet away, and you got illegally tinted windows on your vehicle. I couldn't tell what color your car was, less you. But I can't even <laughs> see inside your car. So, no, I didn't. But you go right ahead, you know. I had a black rookie when I was a training officer 
And he was actually older than me. He, he was an older guy. I think he was around 40 at the time. And we stopped a, a white guy one night, drunk, and James was patting him down. And he turned around, he looked at James, and he said, you're just doing this to me because I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> James turned to me and he said, I thought we were the only one ever used that. <laughs> That, that I mean, really do. <laughs> oh yeah, I, people say they say the they, people say the damnedest things. They that, do. That's why I, in in all of the young rookies I've trained over the years, I go home and write this stuff down. I, just, I believe it or not, I've said the same thing numerous times on my podcast because I <laughs> I wish somebody would have told me to keep call it what you want a journal or whatever get you a notebook and when you fill it up just start you another one and Mm -hmm. put the put the start date and end date on the cover of each notebook because you know what as much crap as i can that i remember there's probably 10 times the stuff that i cannot remember oh yes oh yes because i'll be talking sometimes and i'll be like or thinking i was like oh shit i I I totally forgot something happened Mm -hmm. or something it's like it's like yeah because so much, even some of the bad stuff you see, just write it, just write stuff down just for yourself. Because trust me, and when sometimes, you, sometimes writing that stuff down helps get it out of your head a little bit. Yeah. Just <laughs> write down, you know, it affects us. There's images in our heads that we would love to get rid of. Oh, yeah. I tell, you know, I tell anybody, you know, you know, when especially new rookie cops coming on, uh, which I feel sorry for if, if stuff don't change. But uh, it's like, look, I said, trust me. I said, you do this long enough, and, and you, you're gonna have, you're gonna, you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night having dreams you wish you wouldn't, seeing stuff you wish you could get out of your head. Sometimes it's worse than others, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, but I'll be honest. Like this week, I don't know. I mean, this week, I, I ain't. I don't have. To, I usually get up about four, four thirty to go to work. This morning I was up at two. I forced myself finally to go back to sleep. Another morning I was up. I was like, you know, sometimes you sleep better than other times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People don't realize how much crap. Gun, wake up in a gunfight or, or dreaming. You've been dreaming you're in a gunfight, and you can see the bullets and they're absorbing into the body of the perpetrator, and nothing's happening, or your gun doesn't work. Or you forgot your gun, which I think most of us have done this for a long time, have actually gotten to work without our gun. At some I have point. I, I have, I've done that a couple of times. Uh, well, I've, I've also ran out to jail. I caught call come out. I was in jail booking somebody, run out to jail and get over there and just totally forgot to get my gun out the gun locker outside the door. Mm-hmm. You know, drove all the way to a hot car with no gun. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped at a wreck on the way home one day, and there was a city officer in an unmarked car. And so he comes up, and, and I get out of the car and walk up to greet him, check on injuries and stuff. And he looked at me, and he said, let me guess, you just came from the jail. I knew what that meant, so I just looked down, and there was an empty holster. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went to the store, uh, domestic one time, and I had left the jail and forgot my gun, and I was there. And Thank God I've always been very quick-witted. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you, most time people say something, to me, I'll come right back at you without even thinking about it. And uh, the guy looked at me and said, huh, you don't even have a gun. I didn't look down at it. At my holster, like, oh crap! He said, "Oh, you don't even have a gun." I was like, "That's because they took it away from me because I shot too many damn people." <laughs> and it's like he just shut up, you know. Then after we finished, I was like, "Fuck! I can't believe I forgot my gun." But I didn't look at it because when he said it, I automatically remembered I didn't grab it. But if I'd have looked down at it, he'd know. <laughs> but I'm yeah, like, I'm like, yeah, they yeah. took it away from me. Tip to the rookies: When you take somebody to jail and you put your gun locker, uh, put your gun in the gun locker, put your car keys in there with it. <laughs> put your gun, put your keys in there, and you're not going to run off without your car keys. 
No. That'll but, remind you to get your gun. One of the last times uh, I was training a rookie, you know, he didn't have a unit yet. I picked him up at the jail, you know, we went through a call. I'm sitting there, I'm just watching him. He was handling the call. I'm just kind of watching and listening and I'm looking. And he had an empty holster. <laughs> So I took a picture of it with my phone, you know. But back in the day when we used to do stupid shit like that, there wasn't no camera phones back then. Mm -hmm. I was like, but I took a picture of it and I, I like sent it out to the ship. I'm like, uh, the new rookie forgot something. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like finally I said we got we got back in the car and I'm like, D did you forget something? Well, I don't think so. I'm like, you sure you hadn't forgot anything at all today? Oh no! I'm, I'm, I'm like okay. Hand me your gun. <laughs> I said I put. I said I said look at this picture. He was like, oh shit! He was still in his car. <laughs> I was like, I was like yeah. But I mean, I, could, I mean, we picked on. But I mean, it ain't like I ain't done it before too. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. And you're gonna make mistakes. And I don't care how long you do it. You're gonna make mistakes. And you're going to get back in your car after a traffic stop or a, a domestic call or whatever. And you go, oh, crap. I didn't realize I did that at the time. <laughs> and so Always close your doors when you get out on the call, people. You've heard me say it before. <laughs> because if you don't, I'm not talking about bad guys stealing your car or nothing like that. But if you don't, you could get in your car. Or you want to get back in your unit, but you can't. Because they have big German Shepherd sitting in your driver's seat that's growling at you every time you tell it to get out. <laughs> or you're driving down the road and you happen to hear something and you look back and there's a somebody's cat laying across the back deck of your unit sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, oh shit, you can't try to remember where you got to bring this. Hopefully it's the right house you're bringing this cat back to. <laughs> Yeah, you've answered five calls and you're not sure yeah. where you got in there. <laughs> it's like, where did this cat come from? <laughs> you knock on the door, ma'am, is this your cat? <laughs> yeah. I had but the that's, that, that's the kind of stuff to write down. Yeah, I had a German, I had a German Shepherd deal. I'm like, come on, boy, get out the car. <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do now? I can't. It's well, his car now. this was back in the day. We didn't have portable radios yet. So only had the radio in the car. So I couldn't even call for help because I mm -hmm. couldn't get to it. <laughs> <laughs> he finally now, another thing another thing I started doing after body cams came in, you know, when and a lot of folks don't know this, most officers do, but when you activate it, most of them add the previous thirty seconds to the video. And that lets you if you activate your camera, that captures oftentimes what led up to you turning it on. You might have just been gone into the quick mark to get a cup of coffee and something happens and you turn it on and that gives you the last 30 seconds. Well, in my 60s, I quit turning my camera on until I'd been out of the car for 31 seconds or more, if I possibly could, because I didn't want people hearing on my video. Oh! Man, mm. <laughs> trying to get out the car. <laughs> it's like fuck. My back I was hurts. telling somebody the other day that you know, in my twenties and thirties, I could come out of a Crown Vic running, not a problem. I could come out of it running. Today, I can get out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been in a few motorcycle crashes and stuff through the years, so i'm in my 50s and it's not it's not so i say to some youngsters i'm like go get them y'all go chase them down mm -hmm. i'll be here in a minute there you gotta watch it now we there's uh we don't have it but some departments you don't even have to have a body key. let's say your department don't have a body cab excuse me they have these things in their holsters the departments put in if you draw your gun it sets off Everybody, it automatically have everybody around you in a certain amount of radius. It automatically turns their body cameras on to record. That put they put that on ours probably five or six months before I retired, and I think it was anywhere within thirty feet of whoever drew their weapon. It also did the same thing if they activated their lights, 
and it would turn your camera on. So if you were on a traffic stop and you had it in standby, there was no way that you were going to approach that vehicle without that body cam on. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, but, yeah it, it definitely, and it tagged everyone. It's like you're talking about when you draw your weapon. It activated the camera, and it told them who drew their weapon. Because we got a what? Well, we don't have it, but it's like, if I'm just standing around talking to a bunch of cops or something like that, you know, everybody's like, even well, I've had bad guys like, well, what, or people say, why you got your hand on your gun? Well, it's kind of right there, and it's kind of in a position where I can like rest my hand on it. And mm-hmm. if my hands, if my hands on it, I know your hands not on it. Right. So, but I'll just be sitting there, and it's just automatic. I, I use, I don't use a triple retention no more. I went back to a double, you know. Uh, I'll just sometimes flick it, you know, and uh, some other guys do it too. They'll just, you know, not around civilians or nothing, but we'll, I'll ju- you just flick it and move the gun up and down. Just It just helps with my with your muscle memory on you know, drawing your weapon and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'm not pull- you're not pulling it out. You're just barely pulling it up, you know, and dropping mm-hmm. it back down. You know, some of the guys doing something, they were like, oh, shit, because they forgot they just got these things on there and they kept sitting on people's body cameras and shit. It's like... It's like a it's long like, time ago. <laughs> long time ago, I quit chasing people on foot, and it just didn't see any need. And I've I've been on scenes with on. And back then, I was working evening shift, and it'd be dark. And I've seen the suspect take off running, and a rookie takes off after him. Well, one night, one rookie got clotheslined. Literally, he went around the house. And he ran into the clothesline, and it just straightened him out, feet level, and he fell to the ground. Another one, rookie was running after this guy, and he's probably 30, 40 feet behind him at that point. And he ran around the house, and there was an open septic tank. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. He didn't go in a septic tank, did he? Right in the septic tank. That's what you actually call having a shitty day. <laughs> Definitely. Right there. And he caught a lot of flack for that oh for a while. God, how horrible. God. What it's, it's like, buddy, I'd been like, you, you get in the hose, you ain't getting in the car. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hosing you down. Yeah. Uh, we've had, we had one uh, chasing a bad guy, you know, Bad guy jumped over with the little picket fences, and rookie mm-hmm. went to, and he didn't quite jump as high, and his back of his duty belt got hung on that picket fence, <laughs> and it took us three of us to get his ass off that fence because he is hang, hanging there <laughs> on that fence because <laughs> his duty belt hooked on the back and just like hung him on that fence. I um, actually jumped a supposed to be a burglary in progress, and I was half a mile away or so it was not my call and i just went on and then a sergeant came in right behind me so the two of us get out and we're front of the house is good and clear and we're going to check the back of the house (laughs) so he jumps over the fence He, he climbs the fence to get over I walked about six or eight feet to my right, opened the gate and walked through. <laughs> you know, <laughs> old guys observe things like that. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, been on stuff. I've seen the guy. And I've also seen folks jump that wall and there'd be a big dog on the other side. Oh, yeah. Got to check. Yep. Hey, dog, you, you around here. Been dog bit is not fun. I've been dog bit on yep. duty. You know. Well, Iceman, I have really enjoyed being with you today, and I appreciate the invitation. And the wife is home now, and I think there's going to be some dinner coming up here very well, shortly. Well, I'm not going to hold you from dinner, trust me. Uh, you want to do a shout-out again to your uh, podcast and your stuff like that before you go? Yes, it's Practical Prepping. The website is practicalprepping.info, and we did that because we're trying to put out a lot of information, and there's plenty, you can access plenty of the episodes there, but it's just simply practical prepping, and uh, 
We do appreciate it. And I'll, I'll put, put your um, I'll put your website into our show notes. Make mention that we were on here. And well, I appreciate it. You know, I'm not sure if it's this weekend, next weekend. When I put it out, I will email you uh, or. Yeah, I'll email and send you a, uh, a thing letting you know it's out. What do you listen to? Okay. What, what do you? What is your main platform? Uh, we're actually hosted by Bl- Buzzsprout. Okay, I mean, you- everything is linked from our website. There's no, you know, dot Buzzsprout anything like that. It's- okay. Well, I will send you a, a link to it from Spotify or something like that, so you can go check it out too if you want. Okay, I'll definitely go check it out and. Maybe even share it with the kids. I appreciate it. You know, if you ever need something, you you know how to get in touch with me. Hey, we'll do it, and you the same. If you're going to be up in North Alabama, let me know, and lunch is on me. I I appreciate it. You have a good evening. All right, you too. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, everybody. Uh, That was good. Wasn't too long or nothing like that. He had some very funny stories. Uh, Hope you all been enjoying it. I've been working my butt off getting all these guests uh everybody uh hope y'all have a good had a good weekend you know remember stay safe out there watch your back watch your partner's back we are not sheepdogs we are lions and remember to always smile because the ice man could be behind you